Please subscribe, like and share this video. Thank you for your support. 2 U.S. Code Chapter 29, Capital Police. 2 U.S. Code Subchapter 2, Powers and Duties. 2 U.S. Code Paragraph 1961, Policing of Capital Buildings and Grounds. U.S. Code. Notes. Previous next. A. The Capitol Police shall police the United States Capitol buildings and grounds under the direction of the Capitol Police Board, consisting of the Sergeant at Arms of the United States Senate, the Sergeant at Arms of the House of Representatives, and the Architect of the Capitol, and shall have the power to enforce the provisions of this section, sections 1922, 1966, 1967, and 1969 of this Title 1 and regulations promulgated under Section 1969 of this title, and Chapter 51 of Title 40, and to make arrest within the United States Capitol buildings and grounds for any violations of any law of the United States, of the District of Columbia, or of any state, or any regulation promulgated pursuant thereto, provided that for the fiscal year for which appropriations are made by this act, the Capitol Police shall have the additional authority to make arrests within the District of Columbia for crimes of violence, as defined in Section 16 of Title 18, committed within the Capitol, buildings and grounds and shall have the additional authority to make arrests, without a warrant, for crimes of violence, as defined in Section 16 of Title 18, committed in the presence of any member of the Capitol Police performing official duties, provided further, that the Metropolitan Police Force of the District of Columbia are authorized to make arrests within the United States Capitol buildings and grounds for any violation of any such laws or regulations, but such authority shall not be construed as authorizing the Metropolitan Police Force, except with the consent or upon the request of the Capitol Police Board, to enter such buildings to make arrests in response to complaints or to serve warrants, or to patrol the United States Capitol buildings and grounds. For the purpose of this section, the word ground shall include the House Office Building's parking areas and that part or parts of property which have been or hereafter are acquired in the District of Columbia by the Architect of the Capitol, or by an officer of the Senate or the House, by lease, purchase, intergovernment transfer, or otherwise, for the use of the Senate, the House, or the Architect of the Capitol. B. For purposes of this section, the United States Capitol buildings and grounds shall include any building or facility acquired by the Sergeant at Arms of the Senate for the use of the Senate, for which the Sergeant at Arms of the Senate has entered into an agreement with the United States Capitol Police for the policing of the building or facility. 2 U.S. Code Paragraph 1962 Detail of Police The Capitol Police Board is authorized to detail police from the House Office, Senate Office, and Capitol Buildings for police duty on the Capitol Grounds and on the Library of Congress Grounds. 2 U.S. Code Paragraph 1963 Protection of Grounds it shall be the duty of the Capitol Police on and after April 29, 1876, to prevent any portion of the Capitol grounds and terraces from being used as playgrounds or otherwise, so far as may be necessary to protect the public property, turf, and grass from destruction or injury. 2 U.S. Code Paragraph 1964, Security Systems for Capitol Buildings and Grounds. A. Design and Installation. 1. Effective October 1, 1995, the unexpended balances of appropriations specified in Paragraph 2 are transferred to the appropriation for general expenses of the Capitol Police, to be used for design and installation of security systems for the Capitol buildings and grounds. 2. The unexpended balances referred to in paragraph 1 are a. The unexpended balance of appropriations for security installations, as referred to in the paragraph under the heading Capitol Buildings, under the general headings Joint Items, Architect of the Capitol, and Capitol Buildings and Grounds in Title I of the Legislative Branch Appropriations Act, 1995, 108 Stat 1434, including any unexpended balance from a prior fiscal year and any unexpended balance under such headings in this act. And b. The unexpended balance of the appropriation for an improved security plan, as transferred to the architect of the Capitol by Section 102 of the Legislative Branch Appropriations Act, 1989, 102 Stat 2165. B. Transfer of responsibility to Capitol Police Board. Effective October 1, 1995, the responsibility for design and installation of security systems for the Capitol buildings and grounds is transferred from the architect of the Capitol to the Capitol Police Board. Such design and installation shall be carried out under the direction of the Committee on House Oversight of the House of Representatives and the Committee on Rules and Administration of the Senate, and without regard to Section 6101 of Title 41. On and after October 1, 1995, any alteration to a structural, mechanical, or architectural feature of the Capitol buildings and grounds that is required for a security system under the preceding sentence may be carried out only with the approval of the architect of the Capitol. C. Transfer of positions to Capitol Police. 1. Effective October 1, 1995, all positions specified in paragraph 2, and each individual holding any such position, on a permanent basis, immediately before that date, as identified by the architect of the Capitol, shall be transferred to the Capitol Police. 2. The positions referred to in paragraph 1, are those positions which, immediately before October 1, 1995, are A. Under the architect of the Capitol. B. Within the Electronics Engineering Division of the Office of the Architect of the Capitol and C. Related to the design or installation of security systems for the Capitol buildings and grounds. 3. All annual leave and sick leave, standing to the credit of an individual immediately before such individual is transferred under paragraph 1, shall be credited to such individual, without adjustment, in the new position of the individual. 2 U.S. Code Paragraph 1965, Maintenance of Security Systems for Capitol Buildings and Grounds. A. Effective October 1, 1996, the responsibility for maintenance of security systems for the Capitol buildings and grounds is transferred from the architect of the Capitol to the Capitol Police Board. Such maintenance shall be carried out under the direction of the Committee on House Oversight of the House of Representatives and the Committee on Rules and Administration of the Senate.
on and after October 1, 1996, any alteration to a structural, mechanical, or architectural feature of the Capitol buildings and grounds that is required for security system maintenance under the preceding sentence may be carried out only with the approval of the architect of the Capitol. B. 1. Effective October 1, 1996, all positions specified in paragraph 2, and each individual holding any such position, on a permanent basis, immediately before that date, as identified by the architect of the Capitol, shall be transferred to the Capitol Police. 2. The positions referred to in paragraph 1 are those positions which, immediately before October 1, 1996, are a. Under the architect of the Capitol b. Within the Electronics Engineering Division of the Office of the Architect of the Capitol and c. Related to the maintenance of security systems for the Capitol buildings and grounds 3. All annual leave and sick leave standing to the credit of an individual immediately before such individual is transferred under paragraph 1 shall be credited to such individual, without adjustment, in the new position of the individual 2. U.S. Code Paragraph 1965 a. Prohibition on use of funds for installation of permanent fencing on Capitol grounds None of the funds made available in this or any other act in prior fiscal years, this fiscal year, or any fiscal year thereafter may be used to install permanent, above-ground fencing around the perimeter, or any portion thereof, of the United States Capitol grounds, as described in Section 5102 of Title 40. 2 U.S. Code Paragraph 1966, Protection of Members of Congress, Officers of Congress, and Members of Their Families. A. Authority of the Capitol Police. Subject to the direction of the Capitol Police Board, the United States Capitol Police is authorized to protect, in any area of the United States, the person of any member of Congress, officer of the Congress, as defined in Section 4101b of this title, and any member of the immediate family of any such member or officer, if the Capitol Police Board determines such protection to be necessary. B. Detail of Police. In carrying out its authority under this section, the Capitol Police Board, or its designee, is authorized, in accordance with regulations issued by the Board pursuant to this section, to detail, on a case-by-case -case basis, members of the United States Capitol Police to provide such protection as the Board may determine necessary under this section. C. Arrest of Suspects. In the performance of their protective duties under this section, members of the United States Capitol Police are authorized, 1. To make arrest without warrant for any offense against the United States committed in their presence, or for any felony cognizable under the laws of the United States if they have reasonable grounds to believe that the person to be arrested has committed or is committing such felony, and 2. To utilize equipment and property of the Capitol Police. D. Fines and Penalties. Whoever knowingly and willfully obstructs, resists, or interferes with a member of the Capitol Police engaged in the performance of the protective functions authorized by this section, shall be fined not more than $300 or imprisoned not more than one year, or both. E. Construction of provisions. Nothing contained in this section shall be construed to imply that the authority, duty, and function conferred on the Capitol Police Board and the United States Capitol Police are in lieu of or intended to supersede any authority, duty, or function imposed on any federal department, agency, bureau, or other entity, or the Metropolitan Police of the District of Columbia, involving the protection of any such member, officer, or family member. F. United States defined. As used in this section, the term United States means each of the several states of the United States, the District of Columbia, and territories and possessions of the United States. 2 U.S. Code Paragraph 1966A, Protection of Former Speakers of the House of Representatives. Notwithstanding any other provision of law, except Section 1341 of Title 31, United States Code, hereafter, the United States Capitol Police shall perform a threat assessment for former speakers of the House of Representatives, and if warranted, any such former speaker shall receive a United States Capitol Police protective detail for a period of not more than one year beginning on the date they leave such office, except that such former speaker shall have the option to decline such protective detail at any time. Provided, that at the conclusion of the one-year period, the United States Capitol Police shall perform a threat assessment to determine whether extension of the protective detail is warranted. Provided further, that, the protective detail may be extended beyond the initial one-year period, with the concurrence of the relevant former speaker, if the United States Capitol Police determines that information or conditions, including but not limited to violent threats, warrant such protection. Provided further, that the United States Capitol Police is authorized to enter into memoranda of understanding with relevant state and local law enforcement agencies, as needed, to carry out this section. 2 U.S. Code Paragraph 1967, Law Enforcement Authority. A. Scope. Subject to such regulations as may be prescribed by the Capitol Police Board and approved by the Committee on House Oversight of the House of Representatives and the Committee on Rules and Administration of the Senate, a member of the Capitol Police shall have authority to make arrests and otherwise enforce the laws of the United States, including the laws of the District of Columbia. 1. Within the District of Columbia, with respect to any crime of violence committed within the United States Capitol grounds. 2. Within the District of Columbia, with respect to any crime of violence committed in the presence of the member, if the member is in the performance of official duties when the crime is committed. 3. Within the District of Columbia, to prevent imminent loss of life or injury to person or property, if the officer is in the performance of official duties when the authority is exercised. 4. Within the area described under subsection, B, 1, and 5. Within the area described under subsection, B, 2. A. With respect to any crime of violence committed in the presence of the member, if the member is in the performance of official duties, as defined under such regulations, when the crime is committed, and b. To prevent imminent loss of life or injury to person or property, if the officer is in the performance of official duties, as defined under such regulations, when the authority is exercised. b. Area. 1. The area referred to in subsection a. 4. Is that area bounded by the north curb of H Street from 3rd Street, NW to 7th Street, NE, the east curb of 7th Street from H Street, NE, to M Street, SE, the south curb of M Street from 7th Street, SE to 1st Street, SE, the east curb of 1st Street from M Street, southeast to Potomac Avenue SE, the southeast curb of Potomac Avenue from 1st Street, southeast to South Capitol Street, SW, 
the west curb of South Capitol Street from Potomac Avenue, SW to P Street, SW, the north curb of P Street from South Capitol Street, SW to 3rd Street, SW, in the west curb of 3rd Street from P Street, SW to H Street, NW. 2. The area referred to under subsection A, 5, is that area bounded by the north curb of Constitution Avenue from 14th Street, NW, to 3rd Street, NW, the east curb of 3rd Street from Constitution Avenue, NW, to Independence Avenue, SW, the south curb of Independence Avenue from 3rd Street, SW, to 14th Street, SW, and the west curb of 14th Street from Independence Avenue, SW, to Constitution Avenue, NW. C. Authority of Metropolitan Police Unaffected. This section does not affect the authority of the Metropolitan Police Force of the District of Columbia with respect to the area described in subsection B. D. Crime of Violence Defined. As used in this section, the term, crime of violence, has the meaning given that term in section 16 of Title 18. 2 U.S. Code Paragraph 1968, Citation Release. A. In general, the Chief of the Capitol Police, with the approval of the Capitol Police Board, may designate a member of the Capitol Police to have responsibility for citation release. B. Authority. 1. In the same manner as provided for with respect to an official of the Metropolitan Police Department of the District of Columbia under Section 23.11.10.A. of the District of Columbia Code, the Superior Court of the District of Columbia shall have the authority to appoint the member of the Capitol Police designated under subsection A. of this section to take bail or collateral from persons charged with offenses triable in the Superior Court of the District of Columbia pursuant to that authority. A. The citation power described in subsection B of section 23 to 1110 of the District of Columbia Code shall be exercised by such member of the Capitol Police in the same manner as by an official of the Metropolitan Police Department and B. Paragraph 4 of subsection B of section 23 to 1110 of the District of Columbia Code relating to failure to appear shall apply with respect to citations under subparagraph A of this paragraph. 2. The United States District Court for the District of Columbia shall have the power to authorize the member of the Capitol Police referred to in subsection A of this section to take bond from persons arrested upon writs and process from that court in criminal cases in the same manner as provided for with respect to an official of the Metropolitan Police Department of the District of Columbia under the third sentence of section 23.11.10.A of the District of Columbia Code. 2 U.S. Code Paragraph 1969, Regulation of Traffic by Capitol Police Board. A. Exclusive charge and control of all vehicular and other traffic. The Capitol Police Board, consisting of the Sergeant-at-Arms of the United States Senate, the Sergeant-at-Arms of the House of Representatives, and the Architect of the Capitol, shall have exclusive charge and control of the regulation and movement of all vehicular and other traffic, including the parking and impounding of vehicles and limiting the speed thereof, within the United States Capitol grounds, and said board is authorized and empowered to make and enforce all necessary regulations. Therefore, and to prescribe penalties for violation of such regulations, such penalties not to exceed a fine of $300 or imprisonment for not more than 90 days. Notwithstanding the foregoing provisions of this section, those provisions of the District of Columbia Traffic Act of 1925, as amended, for the violation of which specific penalties are provided in said act, as amended, shall be applicable to the United States Capitol grounds. Prosecutions for violation of such regulations shall be in the Superior Court of the District of Columbia, upon information by the Corporation Council of the District of Columbia or any of his assistants. B. Promulgation of regulations. Regulations authorized to be promulgated under this section shall be promulgated by the Capitol Police Board, and such regulations may be amended from time to time by the Capitol Police Board whenever it shall deem it necessary provided that until such regulations are promulgated and become effective, the traffic regulations of the District of Columbia shall be applicable to the United States Capitol grounds. C. Printing of regulations and effective dates. All regulations promulgated under the authority of this section shall, when adopted by the Capitol Police Board, be printed in one or more of the daily newspapers published in the District of Columbia, and shall not become effective until the expiration of 10 days after the date of such publication, except that whenever the Capitol Police Board deems it advisable to make effective immediately any regulation relating to parking, diverting of vehicular traffic, or the closing of streets to such traffic, the regulation shall be effective immediately upon placing at the point where it is to be enforced conspicuous signs containing a notice of the regulation. Any expenses incurred under this subsection shall be payable from the appropriation, uniforms, and equipment, Capitol Police. D. Cooperation with Mayor of District of Columbia. It shall be the duty of the Mayor of the District of Columbia, or any officer or employee of the Government of the District of Columbia designated by said Mayor upon request of the Capitol Police Board, to cooperate with the Board in the preparation of the regulations authorized to be promulgated under this section, and any future amendments thereof. 2 U.S. Code Paragraph 1970. Assistance by Executive Departments and Agencies. A. Assistance. 1. In general. Executive departments and executive agencies may assist the United States Capitol Police in the performance of its duties by providing services, including personnel, equipment, and facilities on a temporary and reimbursable basis when requested by the Capitol Police Board or in accordance with paragraph 4, and on a permanent and reimbursable basis upon advance written request of the Capitol Police Board, except that the Department of Defense and the Coast Guard may provide such assistance on a temporary basis without reimbursement when assisting the United States Capitol Police in its duties directly related to protection under sections 1922, 1961, 1966, 1967, and 1969 of this title and sections 5101 to 5107 and 5109 of Title 40. 1. Before making a request under this paragraph, the Capitol Police Board shall consult with appropriate members of the Senate and House of Representatives in leadership positions, except in an emergency. 2. Procurement. No services, including personnel, equipment, or facilities may be ordered, purchased, leased, or otherwise procured for the purposes of carrying out the duties of the United States Capitol Police by persons other than officers or employees of the federal government duly authorized by the Chairman of the Capitol Police Board to make such orders, purchases, leases, or procurements. 3. Expenditures or obligation of funds. 
No funds may be expended or obligated for the purpose of carrying out this section other than funds specifically appropriated to the Capitol Police Board or the United States Capitol Police for those purposes with the exception of a. Expenditures made by the Department of Defense or the Coast Guard from funds appropriated to the Department of Defense or the Coast Guard in providing assistance on a temporary basis to the United States Capitol Police in the performance of its duties directly related to protection under Sections 1922, 1961, 1966, 1967, and 1969 of this title and Sections 5101 to 5107 and 5109 of Title 40, 1 and b. Expenditures made by executive departments and agencies in providing assistance at the request of the United States Capitol Police in the performance of its duties and which will be reimbursed by the United States Capitol Police under this section. 4. Provision of assistance. Assistance under this section shall be provided. a. Consistent with the authority of the Capitol Police under Sections 1961 and 1966 of this title. b. Upon the written request of 1. The Capitol Police Board or 2. In an emergency. i. The Sergeant at Arms and Doorkeeper of the Senate in any matter relating to the Senate. 2. The Sergeant at Arms of the House of Representatives in any matter relating to the House of Representatives or 3. The Chief of the Capitol Police. If the Chief of the Capitol Police has determined that the provision of assistance is necessary to prevent the significant disruption of governmental function and public order within the United States Capitol buildings and grounds, as described in Section 1961-1 of this title, and c. 1. On a temporary and reimbursable basis. 2. On a permanent reimbursable basis upon advance written request of the Capitol Police Board, or 3. On a temporary basis without reimbursement by the Department of Defense and the Coast Guard as described under paragraph 1. 5. Revocation. The Capitol Police Board may revoke a request for assistance provided under paragraph 4, B, 2, 3, upon consultation with appropriate members of the Senate and House of Representatives in leadership positions. B, reports. 1. Submission. With respect to any fiscal year in which an executive department or executive agency provides assistance under this section, the head of that department or agency shall submit a report not later than 90 days after the end of the fiscal year to the chairman of the Capitol Police Board. 2. Content. The report submitted under paragraph 1 shall contain a detailed account of all expenditures made by the executive department or executive agency in providing assistance under this section during the applicable fiscal year. 3. Summary. After receipt of all reports under paragraph 2, with respect to any fiscal year, the chairman of the Capitol Police Board shall submit a summary of such reports to the committees on appropriations of the Senate and the House of Representatives. C. Effective date. This section shall take effect on January 10, 2002, and apply to each fiscal year occurring after such date. 2 U.S. Code Paragraph 1971. Contributions of meals and refreshments during emergency duty. At any time on or after November 12, 2001. The United States Capitol Police may accept contributions of meals and refreshments in support of activities of the United States Capitol Police during a period of emergency, as determined by the Capitol Police Board. 2 U.S. Code Paragraph 1972, Contributions of Comfort and Other Incidental Items and Services During Emergency Duty. In addition to the authority provided under Section 1971 of this title, at any time on or after January 10, 2002, the Capitol Police Board may accept contributions of comfort and other incidental items and services to support officers and employees of the United States Capitol Police while such officers and employees are on duty in response to emergencies involving the safety of human life or the protection of property. 2 U.S. Code Paragraph 1973, Support and Maintenance Expenditures During Emergency Duty. At any time on or after November 12, 2001, the Capitol Police Board may incur obligations and make expenditures out of available appropriations for meals, refreshments and other support and maintenance for the Capitol Police when, in the judgment of the Capitol Police Board, such obligations and expenditures are necessary to respond to emergencies involving the safety of human life or the protection of property. 2 U.S. Code Paragraph 1974, Capitol Police Special Officers. A. In general. In the event of an emergency, as determined by the Capitol Police Board or in a concurrent resolution of Congress, or as determined by the Chief of the Capitol Police in accordance with Section 1970, A. 4, B. 2, 3, of this title, the Chief of the Capitol Police may appoint. 1. Any law enforcement officer from any federal agency or state or local government agency made available by that agency to serve as a special officer of the Capitol Police within the authorities of the Capitol Police in policing the Capitol buildings and grounds. And 2. Any member of the Uniformed Services, including members of the National Guard, made available by the appropriate authority to serve as a special officer of the Capitol Police within the authorities of the Capitol Police in policing the Capitol buildings and grounds. An appointment under this section due to an emergency determined by the Chief of the Capitol Police under paragraph 4. B. 2. 3. Of Section 1970, A. Of this title, shall be in effect for the period of the emergency, unless and until the Capitol Police Board revokes the request for assistance under paragraph 5 of such section. B. Conditions of appointment. An individual appointed as a special officer under this section shall 1. Serve without pay for service performed as a special officer, other than pay received from the applicable employing agency or service. 2. Serve as a special officer no longer than a period specified at the time of appointment. 3. Not be a federal employee by reason of service as a special officer, except as provided under paragraph 4. And 4. Shall be an employee of the government for purposes of Chapter 171 of Title 28 if that individual is acting within the scope of his office or employment in service as a special officer. C. Reimbursement agreements. Nothing in this section shall prohibit the Capitol Police from entering into an agreement for the reimbursement of services provided under this section with any federal, state, or local agency. D. Regulations. Subject to approval by the Speaker of the House of Representatives, in consultation with the Minority Leader of the House of Representatives, and the Majority Leader of the Senate, in consultation with the Minority Leader of the Senate, acting jointly, the Capitol Police Board may prescribe regulations to carry out this section. E. Effective date. This section shall take effect on February 20, 2003, and shall apply to fiscal year 2003 and each fiscal year thereafter. 2 U.S. Code Paragraph 1975. Overseas Travel 
A. Definition. In this section, the term United States means each of the several states of the United States, the District of Columbia, and the territories and possessions of the United States. B. In general, a member of the Capitol Police may travel outside of the United States if 1. That travel is with, or in preparation for, travel of a senator, including travel of a senator as part of a congressional delegation. 2. The member of the Capitol Police is performing security advisory and liaison functions, including advanced security liaison preparations, relating to the travel of that senator, and 3. The sergeant at arms and doorkeeper of the Senate gives prior approval to the travel of the member of the Capitol Police. C. Law enforcement functions. Subsection B. Shall not be construed to authorize the performance of law enforcement functions by a member of the Capitol Police in connection with the travel authorized under that subsection. D. Reimbursement. The Capitol Police shall be reimbursed for the overtime pay, travel, and related expenses of any member of the Capitol Police who travels under the authority of this section. Any reimbursement under this subsection shall be paid from the account under the heading Sergeant at Arms and Doorkeeper of the Senate under the heading Contingent Expenses of the Senate. E. Amounts Received. Any amounts received by the Capitol Police for reimbursements under subsection D shall be credited to the accounts established for the general expenses or salaries of the Capitol Police and shall be available to carry out the purposes of such accounts during the fiscal year in which the amounts are received and the following fiscal year. F. Effective Date. This section shall apply to fiscal year 2005 and each fiscal year thereafter. 2 U.S. Code Paragraph 1975A. Overseas travel to accompany members of House leadership. A. Travel authorized. 1. In general, a member of the Capitol Police may travel outside of the United States for official duty if A. That travel is with, or in preparation for, travel of a member of the House of Representatives who holds a position in a House leadership office, including travel of the member as part of a congressional delegation, and B. The Sergeant at Arms of the House of Representatives gives prior approval to the travel of the member of the Capitol Police. 2. Definitions. In this subsection, a. The term, House Leadership Office, 1. Means an office of the House of Representatives for which the appropriation for salaries and expenses of the office for the year involved is provided under the heading House Leadership Offices in the Act making appropriations for the legislative branch for the fiscal year involved. B. The term Member of the House of Representatives includes a delegate or resident commissioner to the Congress. And C. The term United States means each of the several states of the United States, the District of Columbia, and the territories and possessions of the United States. B. Reimbursement from Sergeant at Arms. 1. In general. From amounts made available for salaries and expenses of the Office of the Sergeant at Arms of the House of Representatives, the Sergeant at Arms of the House of Representatives shall reimburse the Capitol Police for the overtime pay, travel, and related expenses of any member of the Capitol Police who travels under the authority of this section. 2. Use of amounts received. Any amounts received by the Capitol Police for reimbursements under paragraph 1 shall be credited to the accounts established for the general expenses or salaries of the Capitol Police and shall be available to carry out the purposes of such accounts during the fiscal year in which the amounts are received in the following fiscal year. C. Effective date. This section shall apply with respect to fiscal year 2017 and each succeeding fiscal year.